Thank you, Bob. I'm going to uh, pull up our slides. And what I wanted to uh, focus on here is the technique and um, technique pearls. We've heard already from uh, Bob, Steve, and Gary as far as technique, so I, I probably don't need to uh, reinforce too much more um, other than perhaps point out a few uh, important uh, pearls I hope to show here. So um, one of the things, of course, in terms of any scleral dissection is understanding the landmarks. And, and I want to sort of point out things perhaps that you didn't hear yet, which is to understand the landmarks that are necessary because the critical point in the procedure, of course, is the implantation uh, and the point of insertion and the angle of insertion of the express shunt. And I think you can get into trouble if the implantation insertion point is incorrect or the angle is incorrect. And that's what I think the, for those of you, of course, that do trabeculectomy, uh, that's going to be the most important issue. So I actually like to see exactly where I want to be placing this device before even I make any scleral incision, certainly prior to making the AC entry and even after the placement of the device. And remember again where we want this device to be. Again, rehashing the anatomy, just anterior to the anterior aspect of the spur, making sure it's iris plane uh, and avoiding uh, uh, contact with the cornea. The back plate also needs to be flush with the scleral bed to ensure that there is, uh, that to, pre to prevent erosion, which is a non-issue if it's done in that manner. So let's remember our anatomy in terms of the, uh, the external limbal area. And here we can see the uh, sclera, the tangential fibers that are organized in a random fashion, I should say, not tangential, but random. The scleral spur is this white glistening band which, which really needs to be identified in every case. And whether this is express or non-penetrating or whatever the procedure, that's critical. And then we have our blue zone to transition into clear cornea, and that's critical to, to understand before proceeding. And again, we just want to reiterate, we want to be at the anterior aspect of the spur as far as the adequate placement. So even before doing the scleral dissection, is, that's approximately where my planned entry point will be. Now, why is it important to do it here as opposed to after the scleral flap is dissected? Because the scleral flap dimensions will be important. So this is an example where the implant will likely be according to the insertion point. I think it's important to ensure we have proper dimensions of the scleral flap around the implant. So here you see that I, I prefer myself about a millimeter and a half around the implant to ensure we have adequate resistance to control with scleral sutures. I think a little bit of a gap between the apex of the flap uh, and the anterior aspect of the implant will it prevent perhaps a compression of the, of the implant by the flap. And so it's important to, as we know, as we see here, that since I've identified that point, I can now measure out exactly what I want the dimensions to be. And it's about four by three millimeters in my preference, but everyone has their own preference on that. And here's an example about how where, we've, where we place this, again, exactly at the anterior aspect of the spur. And you can see how we have nice coverage all the way around the implant and a little bit anterior to it as well. And that's sort of what I like to see as far as my preferred dissection. Here's an example again after we perform our dissection where we want to place this. And that's the kind of picture you want to have mentally in your mind in terms of where to insert this. It's a little bit different in trabeculectomy because you can alter your insertion and you can move up into the cornea as most of us do. It's a little bit different with the, with the implant. Preferred choice of entry can be using, of course, any variety of instruments, a 25 or 27 gaze depending on the implant of choice or a sapphire blade may be used. And the key point here is entering at the iris plane. That can't be reiterated enough, that the key point is to insert the uh, blade or the needle at the iris plane. And it does help to rotate the eye down, just remember where the iris plane is and be at that level. And that's sort of the, that's sort of the position we'd like to see in the, uh, in the anterior chamber. And some gonia views again. That's again a nice example just to show where we're entering here. Um, and to show again that the space here is adequate between the cornea and the iris. So I'm uh, just going to show a, a video here, a clip, and uh, again, we've seen some great videos already, so I'm going to focus more on the pearls that I just mentioned here. And Gary, who of course copied my technique, will skip on, of course. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so here, here, before the dissection here, if I can play that, a little bit of cautery, of course, is necessary, but not to overdo it. So I've already sort of gone ahead and like I said, identified where the spur is, where my implant will be there. Scleral dissection, again, like I said, approximately about a four by three millimeter flap. And as you can see, we don't always measure it with a caliber, but I think early on it's worthwhile to do that. And again, these are just little subtle changes or subtle considerations, I should say, compared 
to, um, to trabeculectomy. And your blade of choice, of course, is, is a preference. You see metal blades, uh, uh, diamond blades may be used, uh, tunneling techniques may be, may be used. I think for me, of course, it's, it's important to make sure we have a good thickness and about a half thickness, I think, is what I usually advocate because often uh, one, if is not careful, can thin out the flap. We'll see how our pig eye does today. And again, dissecting into pretty well, into pretty well uh, clear cornea is what our, what our goal is. And so once we have the, uh, the dissection forward, again, we're always, kind of, we're always considering where our landmarks are. And you can see how the blade's actually gone, you know, just into the clear corneal blue zone. I think that just helps us to, number one, allow us to visualize, and, and number two, to ensure that we're not compressing down onto the, onto the flap. So that's basically where our dissection is. I think, again, really pointing out the sclera back here, the scleral spur, very obvious glistening band. Now, mitomycin C can be applied. Uh, my indications are usually as per it would be for trabeculectomy. And uh, in this case, I typically apply the mitomycin under, after my scleral dissection under the conjunctiva and ideally placing it um, slightly under the scleral flap as well, as you see there, and for a certain duration and, uh, and then irrigation. And again, that basically one would, one would use your standard technique. And this is a 400 micron sapphire blade. It's very nice to use to enter. And again, we're just really looking at where we want to be, just at the anterior aspect of the spur. Try to make it, of course, in the center uh, of the dissection and iris plane. And again, it helps to have the eye turned down a little bit and having a, a second instrument uh, hold, a, a forceps holding the eye, of course, during the implant, during the insertion. And the, one of the nice things that Gary mentioned is that, you know, it's very, very uncommon. It really, it doesn't happen as far as the AC shallowing unless we have a positive pressure situation. And that's a big advantage compared to trabeculectomy. We're making a hole with a punch or, or scissors uh, will, will typically lead to some shallowing. And even just a little bit of shallowing, as we know, in some of these riskier cases can lead to uh, a, a pseudo-malignant type of picture as far as uh, choroidal expansion, vitreous uh, moving forward and shallowing of the chamber, and so that's critical. Uh, this uh, model you see here um, is the P50 model, and uh, the spurs noted here. Typically, I like to rotate the implant about 90 degrees. Of course, the, the, uh, the, the implant is gonna be uh, longer in the, in, the, in the vertical dimension, so turning it 90 degrees is helpful, as you see here. And um, sometimes it's a little bit tight, and that's a little bit of a push to get it in there. Uh, to get that spur through that, uh, that opening. And then releasing it, uh, we see then the implant really at the position we'd like to see it at. And at this point, really, you know, it's, it's a matter of assessing the flow and really suturing the scleral flap as we would in trabeculectomy, although a variety of surgeons have opinions about how meticulous one needs to be. I still am pretty meticulous about ensuring that my flow is, um, is, is, uh, is, is, is controlled and I like to use a gonium mirror really just to confirm where I am. Uh, as you see here, I'm very pleased with that, with, that, with that location there. And my preference is using slip knots, as I think others do as well, and then re-injecting BSS in uh, to uh, assess the flow. And then once we're happy, we can then lock the suture, putting some air in, taking it out, making sure the viscoelastic out of the eye, et cetera, et cetera, in a combined case. So those are some of the pearls in terms of uh, technique. And again, I just want to reiterate the landmarks can't be emphasized more. Although the, uh, the learning curve is, is perhaps a little bit shorter, the precision required uh, in the correct placement uh, can't be minimized. And, and so uh, there are attractions, as, as Gary and Bob and others have mentioned, but the, uh, the, the surgical refinement and the surgical approach is, is perhaps, I would say, even at a, different, at a higher level than trabeculectomy because of the need to have this implant specifically located at the right position at the right angle, at the right uh, contour with the scleral surface. Thank you very much.